Hi guys, so I just want to show you the tale of two Liz Trusses. Liz Truss in 2016 and Liz Truss today. Now, Liz Truss back in 2016 was a Remainer, it seems, and she was really convincing with her arguments. Not convincing enough, unfortunately, for many people, but what she said back in 2016 actually came true. She was telling the truth. She was predicting the future. So I'm going to show you what Liz Truss said back in 2016 when she was a, Rema a Remainer and then how she feels today as a Brexiteer. But what I think is really important is we get the message across to people and that's the people in your companies. It's the people that we all work with. It's the people in the entire food chain which employs a massive amount of people across this country, that we get the message across about just how difficult it would become to do business. If we are a country like, if we were a country like Norway, we'd have to fill in 50 boxes every time on a form, every time we went into exports. Norway, she's using Norway as the worst case scenario, when in reality today, the UK in respect to the European Union is far away from Norway something. In products like agricultural products, there's a regime of quotas and tariffs. This is amazing to hear because she's predicting the future. Quotas and tariffs. Now, of course, the UK eventually got a trade deal with the European Union that does not include uh, tariffs, but there are barriers, non-tariff barriers. Now, she didn't explain this back in 2016. I'm not blaming her for that. But she did mention tariffs, which were a real concern at the time. I know how difficult it is getting products into markets like the US and China. Uh, DEFRA has just filled in an 1,000 page form, which is one part of an eight stage process to get British beef and lamb. And we've still got to get a resolution passed by Congress to allow that British lamb into the market. What's really interesting for me is that she sounds convinced not that she's trying to convince people, but she truly believes what she's saying. Now, politicians will say something just to convince the public to vote in a particular way. But I truly believe here that Liz Truss believes what she's saying. So I think we've got to be very careful about taking that single market for granted and being outside that single market. And the single market isn't something that is a sexy, exciting thing to explain, but it is really crucial to the amount of growth we've seen in food and drink exports over the past 40 years. It is really crucial to that. But what so, as she said, the she's talking here about the food and drink feder to the food and drink federation and how that industry has been built up over the 40 years, as she described here as. You know, the UK was a member of the European Union since 1973, and this has helped businesses in the UK export. And it would be madness, in a sense, to jeopardise the single market, to leave the single market. So this was Liz Truss back in 2016. Let's hear what Liz Truss had to say in November, sorry, in October 2020. We're in intense negotiations with the EU. We've made real progress and we want to get a good deal with the EU, a deal like they have with Canada, which we think is perfectly reasonable. We're making good progress on the negotiations. But what we can't do is sign up to something that affects our sovereignty. Notice how trade was replaced with sovereignty. And sovereignty came along quite recently. It wasn't something that immediately came into effect uh, in, in the vocabulary of Brexiteers in 2016. It was actually something that popped up on the radar last year mainly. We need to protect our sovereignty. Whatever that actually meant, no one actually was able to define what that was, but it replaced trade. And our ability to set our own rules and regulations, those are really important principles, but absolutely a deal can be done with the EU. There's a clear deal that they've got with Canada. We would like a deal like that. But if the EU aren't prepared to do a deal that allows the UK to retain its sovereignty, then we will go to Australia style terms. And I think that's perfectly reasonable. Now, what she's mean he meaning here by Australian style terms was a no deal Brexit. 
So how can someone back in 2016 describe a scenario that would be damaging for businesses if the UK left the single market and then in just a few years later turn around and say yes we're completely willing to leave the single market because that would be a no deal Brexit. It would be leaving the single market and imposing tariffs on itself or allowing tariffs to be imposed. So how can someone, I, I'm struggling to understand who is the real Liz Truss here? Was the real Liz Truss the one in 2016 who believed leaving the European Union would be a bad idea? Or is the real Liz Truss the one today who is talking, well, back in 2020, talking about how leaving the single market was an okay thing to do. And even today, she still supports Brexit. She thinks it was a good idea. How does she maintain those two ideas in her mind? Or does she not maintain either of these ideas? Is she just basically a career politician? Someone who puts their finger in the air and follows whatever way the wind is blowing. I'm tended, I'm, I'm tending, sorry, I'm, I'm in a sense thinking in, in that way that she is like that, that she's just a career politician. But I was convinced by her rhetoric back in 2016. And I was convinced that she was convinced too. Well, which is it? Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee. So why not check it out?